Do you want to be the most powerful being in the Hogwarts universe without years of study? Are you perchance into consequence-free moral ambiguity? Do you fancy defeating your foes with little more than salad and profanity? Well, today I'm going to show you how you can become an overpowered vegan Voldemort with the added perks of keeping your nose and suffering absolutely no consequences. But Havoc, you say? I already know a powerful mechanic in this game. Well, you see, there are actually several overpowered features in this game. But I'm not just going to show you an overpowered build, there are others who've done that already. I'm going to show you how to use one overpowered build to get yourself a second overpowered build. At that point, you can just kill everything in whatever way seems best to you. Don't believe me? Well, get comfy on the couch and welcome to the hangout. Let's jump into this, shall we? Now, unfortunately, this game isn't going to let us give our wonderful hero here a glorious beard, so all that's left to say, really, is that we'll be playing on hard to show these builds off, just in case you were wondering if it's also effective at that level. It indeed is. Now, you can do these overpowered builds and work towards them in whatever order you would like. However, it's going to be a lot easier to do one in order to unlock the other one. That's going to make a lot more sense here in just a minute. However, our first overpowered build is going to take us a little bit into the story before we can get it, so there are a few things you can do to sort of make the, the journey there a little bit easier. If, for example, you're going to want to get comfortable with the idea of going to the Dark Arts. I know, I know, that's kind of like the Sith powers, but we're going to be a little bit of a Grey Jedi in this one, you know. You're going to want to take things like Disarming Curse and Stunning Curse and Blood Curse and all of the cursey things, basically. If you can curse in this game, just do it. You're also going to want to invest in the spell knowledge tree here because you're going to want to start pairing spells together. What I mean by that is that you'll find that if you stack certain skills together and use them in conjunction with each other, they're going to be a lot more effective. So, for example, if you use Levioso and Ascendo together, they're going to be pretty effective. Accio and Incendio work pretty well together. My personal favorite is going to be Glacius and Defindo. I'll show you why. In fact, this poor little wolfie here is going to be our little test dummy. There's Glacius, there's a Defindo, and it's gone. But yeah, as we work towards our overpowered builds, until you get there, it gets really helpful if you learn which skills to pair with each other. Ooh, puppy. Levioso and Descendo. And he's gone. So yeah, as you can see, it can get pretty powerful. But this is all well and good, but it's not exactly extremely overpowered. Well, that's where the rest of this comes in. Let me show you exactly how it is that we unlock both overpowered builds. Now, once you get a certain way into the story, you're going to unlock In the Shadow of the Undercroft. This is the quest line you're looking for. This is going to have you come meet Sebastian. And this would be Sebastian. Sebastian is going to be your best friend, but he's not like your best friend in the whole, like, we hang out all the time, we go to lunch together, and, you know, everybody, you know, like, when we go bowling on Friday nights, I don't know, does anybody go bowling anymore, but whatever. But, like, he's not that kind of best friend. He's kind of best friend that it's like you stick him in the corner and maybe cover him with a blanket when everyone's around, but then, like, you know, you talk to him when no one else is looking. He's that kind of best friend. Anyway, Sebastian's going to be the guy that basically all you need to know is that you're going to want to do everything that he says to do. So he tells you to jump, you say, absolutely, I'll break the law. That's the kind of relationship you need to have with Sebastian. You do that, he's going to teach you everything you need to know. Now, when you get to a certain place in Sebastian's storyline, he's going to take you to the Slytherin part of Hogwarts, and that's where we are right now, in case you couldn't tell by all the snake paraphernalia and furniture and whatnot. But he's going to have you help him find the Slytherin Scriptorium. More importantly, it is this quest line that is going to be when he starts teaching you the unforgivable curses. This is the first of our two overpowered builds. And like I said before, all you're going to want to do is everything Sebastian tells you to do. And when he offers to teach you these things, you say, absolutely, teach it to me. Now I hear you, you're going, wait a second, in Harry Potter, in the, well, in the Hogwarts universe, the unforgivable curses are a one-way ticket to Azkaban. The worst thing about prison was the was the Dementors. They were flying all over the place and they were scary and then they come down and they suck the soul out of your body and it height. However, this game doesn't believe in consequences for the main protagonist, so you actually don't have to worry about it. You can say all of the naughty words with basically immunity. As long as you're okay with a little bit of uncomfortable story here and there, you're pretty much scot-free to use these curses as much as you want. So let me show you how this build works. So the first unforgivable curse he's going to teach you is this one, it's called Crucio. Basically, you're going to kind of torture your opponents to death. It's, I know, it sounds a little bit evil, and um, it's definitely the Sith side for sure. And in fact, if you're doubting just how evilly Sithy it is, just wait till you see what it looks like when you cast it. Yeah, you're definitely casting Dark Lightning. 
But as you can see, it basically, your enemy just cowers in utter pain. Uh, you're just torturing him to death, basically. And now as useful as that can be, it's not really going to help you that much when you have camps like this, where you have 5, 10, 15 different enemies. So we're going to need something with crowd control abilities. So I wonder what we can do about that. Enter the other unforgivable curses. That would be Imperio and Avada Kedavra. Imperio is going to basically take control of one of your enemies for a period of time, and Avada Kedavra is uh, the killing curse. It's a one-shot kill. Now, these are all well and good on their own, but they're not stupidly overpowered. What makes them overpowered is the skills. So like I said, you're gonna wanna embrace the dark arts, and there's a few you're definitely going to want. Number one, you're gonna want Crucio Mastery. Basically, that means that when you hit somebody with Crucio, if you attack them with a normal attack, it spreads curse to everyone else and getting everyone as cursed as can be is going to be your best friend. Also helpful to have Imperial Mastery just so that if one of the people that you're controlling attacks one of your enemies, they'll be cursed too. But that leads us to the big granddaddy of them all, Avada Kedavra Mastery. What this means is that if one of your enemies is cursed and you kill them with Avada Kedavra, it kills every enemy cursed with Avada Kedavra. So let me show you what that looks like. Here we have three gentlemen that are on a nice little camping trip, just out exploring the wonderful nature of... Well, it's actually probably pretty cold out here, so you know what? You guys should start a fire. You should know... Oh, they did start a fire. Never mind, I'm stupid. Anyway, so we have these three gents, and normally we would have to take them on one at a time, but let's see if there's an easier way to go about this. Well, as you can see, we just hit this guy with, a, with Crucio, and as we attacked him a few times, now our enemies are cursed. Which means we can just cast Avada Kedavra, and they're all dead. Yeah. So that's a pretty good crowd control. However, what you'll notice is that a second wave spawned in. And this is actually a pretty good counter to our overpowered build because, well, Avada Kedavra has to recharge, so this is going to take some time. So what do we do about that? It's almost like we're going to need a second overpowered build. Well... Good news, I have one for you. Let me show you what we've got. Now, I know you're saying, what could possibly be better than killing your enemies with the unforgivable curses? And you might say, wait a second, is it killing them with kindness? Well, no, it is alliterative, but not quite like that. It would actually be killing them with cabbage. You see, this is the one universe where if you don't eat your salad, your salad may just eat you. Enter the Chinese chomping cabbage. That's what we have right now, and as you can see, it's not too bad. I mean, we're throwing it. It's it's being a nuisance. It's killing some enemies. It's not overpowered, doing 175 damage. That's not that's respectable. But we want to make this a truly overpowered build. So how could we possibly take the Chinese chopping cabbage, which is fairly decent, as you could see, and make it utterly broken? Let me show you exactly how we do that. Now, this is where you're gonna wanna get acquainted with the loom in your room of requirement. As you can see, when you get legendary equipment, you can slot in level three traits. That can get pretty broken. These traits range from decreasing damage from dark wizards, increased venomous tentacular damage, increased damage with incendio, and so on and so forth. That's all well and good, but what we're looking for is one called Herbology 3. Significantly increases damage by all plants. And if you thought the Chinese chomping cabbage was already powerful, you have seen nothing yet. But the question is, how do I get these particular traits? Well, as best I can tell, the traits randomly are assigned to different enemy bandit camps. In other words, you're not going to have the same trait in the same camp across playthroughs. Again, at least as best I can tell. So in order to find the trait you're looking for, it's unfortunately not as easy as go here, kill enemy, get loot. It's more a matter of systematically clearing out enemy bandit camps until you find the trait you're looking for. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, ugh, I have to clear camp after camp just to find the trait I want? That could be kind of a problem, because it's going to take forever, and it's going to be really tough to clear every enemy camp, potentially, before I can find that trait. If only there was a way to farm these camps. I mean, if only there was a way that I could roll up to a camp, cast a few spells, and, you know, kill everybody real quick so I can just kind of grab the loot and move on with my life, and, uh... Oh, look, they're all dead. That'll work. And even if you miss one, by the way, like this guy over here, you just cleared out 95%. So that guy wasn't marked, so he didn't die, but still, it made this entire camp. Yeah, we're done. We already won that camp. So it might make a little bit more sense now when I say that one build helps you unlock the other build. 
And then from here, you just have to find this little chest and open it on up. Now we got Scorching 3. That's not the one we were wanting. We're wanting Herbology 3. But the great thing about this is that you can just wash, rinse, repeat. All you have to do is just keep rolling up into camps, curse everybody, cast Avada Kedavra, and bada bing bada boom, you got your loot. Now using this method, I was able to find it in one of the camps right over here. Again, it's a random spawn as best I can tell, so you might even find it in one of your first camps up here, so not a guarantee you're gonna have to go as long as I did. But the only things we're going to need from here are a little bit of Neasel Fur, which if you want a Neasel Den, there's an easy one right over here. You can also just buy Neasel Fur from Hogsmeade if you want, but I don't think you're gonna get all six that you're gonna want in one shot. But that's all it takes to install this. So from here, all you have to do is throw that trait on your gear. As you can see, we've got Herbology 3 on all our gear, and you're pretty much ready to rock. Yeah, the world is your oyster. Do whatever you please. But I want to show you just what this looks like. So in order to test both of these builds, I'm going to take us down to this particular camp. This one's a little bit of a tough one. It's got not only a troll on the outside that you're going to have to kill, but then once you get into the camp, there's a bunch of enemies and another troll. So it'll be a nice little place to demonstrate just how overpowered both of these builds are. By the way, one last thing to mention for this build is you're going to want to go and get one of the perks from Room of Requirement called Fertilizer. It makes it so that when you throw a Chinese chomping cabbage, you actually throw two of these little terror balls at everybody so that your salad can eat your opponents that much more efficiently. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get this test going. Like I said, at this camp, we should have a troll outside of the camp. I think over this way. Yep, there he is. And there's one inside the camp. So let's kick this thing off, shall we? We'll go ahead and use our... Uh, dark Arts build on the outside. Oh boy. But as you can see, we're doing basically no damage to him currently, but I wonder if there's something that we could do to maybe, I don't know, eliminate him a little bit quicker. Maybe... Yeah, okay, we already won the outside. And they're both dead. But like I said, that's just the beginning because now we have to go inside and fight a much harder battle. But the good news is, I have the assistance of an elite terrorist organization known as the Cabbage Patch Kids. So let's throw our cabbage and see what happens. Go! Go, Cabbage, go! Ow. <laughs> I just totally ate that one. But as you can see, uh, the Cabbage is kind of eating that troll at a pretty impressive rate. And it's already eliminating a lot of our foes. And basically, when you start throwing out all the Cabbages, your job from this point on is, well, number one, dodge all the hits and not be a dunce. But basically, just pop shields. And then when your Cabbage runs out, just throw some more out. Also, don't get stun locked in a corner. That makes you look a little bit stupid. But yeah, so if the enemy's got a yellow shield on, just pop it with a yellow ability. And I just accidentally used the god power. My bad. But yeah, as you can see, uh, the cabbages have already pretty much eliminated our foes. Just Levioso there, and that guy will be dead. Yep, there he goes, and the troll is about to take one more cabbage hit, and he's dead. And by the way, if you didn't notice, that troll was way above our level, which means that um, it's not impossible to kill them, but boy, their health pool is enormous. But because we have the cabbages, they just chewed right through his health. In fact, it wiped out this entire camp. Now, there's a couple guys on the outskirts, so we can clean them up too, but... Yeah, we just took out one of the more difficult camps in the game with just a few curse words and some salad. This is why some people choose to sleep with a gun under their pillow. I like to sleep with a cabbage under my pillow. And so there you have not one, but two overpowered builds in Hogwarts Legacy that when they're combined, make the ultimate overpowered build called the Vegan Voldemort. All of this, and you even get to avoid the 43 life sentences in Azkaban you probably should have after using all the naughty words. But here's the thing, if you think that was broken, then you need to watch this video where I show you the single most overpowered, broken thing in Cyberpunk 2077. Possibly in any game. That being said, I'll catch you for the next hangout, everyone. Have a great day, and goodbye.